Hey y'all, welcome back to Reddit The Wire. Well, as part of our Breeders' Cup handicapping series, we're going to talk about the Classic, which looks to be a very interesting race and uh, a lot of options given the most recent defections, as I'm sure you're all aware, that we'll cover. So let's get into it. So this is the Breeders' Cup Classic. It's run at a mile and a quarter, and note, it will start out of a shoot, uh, given that uh, Santa Anita is a small track. These turns are going to be tighter and uh, then uh, some of the eastern ones so something to keep in mind when you're taking a look at this uh, unfortunately Archangelo has scratched and has now retired to stud uh, so we're not going to see him at four years old um, you know uh, alas poor Yorick we knew thee well albeit briefly uh, but uh, that changes the complexion of the race a great degree uh, for some of you uh, I don't know that I'd be was thinking Archangelo was necessarily going to run uh, a winning effort in this race. Uh, but uh, anyway, we don't have to worry about it now. So let's look at the rest of the field. Uh, Zandon is one that you got to wonder if the light bulb just went off in the woodwork. Because we know about this horse. He always seems, somebody always seems to beat him. He's about as honest a horse as you can get. 12 out of 13 times in his career, he's been in the money, uh, but three wins. And that's really the question mark with Zandon. This horse has just as much talent as anybody in this field. He fires every time. He's looked good in training from what I can see. He's got a lot of energy. Chad Brown uh, seems to be high on him. And he did note that uh, a lot of times when he isn't winning, it's because Somebody was uh, firing a little better or the, the quality of the field. Uh, and to an extent, he's correct. Uh, you know, you look at some of the, uh, uh, the losses he's had. Um, there have been a couple where uh, the, Cody's Wish, most notably, or uh, even Taba or, uh, you know, going back to Epicenter. But uh, he's also beat Repo Rocks is, frankly, a horse I think he should have beaten in the Westchester. Uh, White of Barrio is a horse I think he should have beaten in the Whitney. So uh, I don't think that's, uh, there's definitely something there. And he's awful hard to trust as a win candidate for that reason. However, in this field with uh, the shape of the race being what it is, and uh, I think that this one just might be the upset candidate uh, to, uh, to win this. And if you get anything close to 12 to one, I think that's an awesome price. Uh, getting Frankie Dettori aboard, he knows how to ride at Santa Anita. Uh, I think there's a lot of things to like about Zandon and, uh, he is, uh, I think he could very well upset the apple cart. Wade Barrio, uh, is, um, a very polarizing horse and I am from the camp uh, that I do not really like this horse. Uh, okay. He, he, a lot of people have a lot of opinions on him and a lot of people like this horse, but let's remember one thing, mile and a quarter. This is not a mile and a quarter horse. He proved it in the Kentucky Derby uh, that that is not a distance that his pedigree is suited for. And that I can't get past. I just don't think this horse can get the distance. Now, save for that, Let's look at some other things. The Pegasus World Cup, he was at his home track, a horse for the course, up the track against a really good field. Uh, so then the next in an optional claimer, they put him in and he wins it easily, but it's an optional claimer and it was a key race. Okay, but none of those are lighting the world on fire. So you get to the Met Mile and he did run a good race. That's true. And it was the first with Dick Dutrow. Uh, and, but he did lose to Cody's Wish and Zandon. So uh, so that we get to, from there, we take a little time off and we get to the Whitney. Okay, he ran a great race. I will not dispute that with you. However, let's also look back at that field. Save for Zandon, who we've alluded to, has issues winning races sometimes. Cody's wish, two turns, mile and an eighth, not what he wants. Charge it, uh, amongst others. Every one of those horses in that race had some vulnerability 
and were better at one turn. So the field was set for a horse to win it up on the engine. I thought Giant Game was going to do it at being a two-turn horse. Uh, I was wrong. Uh, but White Barrio was training very well and took advantage of a very vulnerable field. And you can't get past that. So when we're going to evaluate White Abario, just because Dick Dutro trains him, uh, it can't get past the fact that a mile and a quarter is a challenging distance for this horse. And his best effort came against a soft field in many respects. So took, put those two things together. And also remember, he has not run since August. Why did they take all this time to train him up to the Breeders' Cup Classic? I think it's because he's going to need every bit of conditioning he can get to try to get a mile and a quarter. And I cannot get past that. And frankly, I'm tossing White Barrio for the reasons stated. Uh, I fully understand if people want to disagree with me, but I just cannot get past what I know about this horse. And so I'm going to look for value for horses I know can get a mile and a quarter. Mr. Cut is not one of them uh, that I'm going to be excited about. He'll get the distance. I, I don't worry about that. You see in the Tokyo City, he had a mile and a half, he won it. But he's not good enough. Uh, he just isn't. Uh, he's a grade three horse at best. Uh, he has been getting progressively better. You can say that for sure. And you do get Luis Saez aboard, which leads me to believe that perhaps he might be a little closer to the pace uh, than perhaps we might expect. So there are some positives with Mr. Cut, but he's class-wise, he's not a fit in this race. I don't think he would need a monster step forward in order to factor here. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm, if you like him, I could see using him under at a big price, but that's the extent of it. He's not a win candidate in my opinion. Derma Sotagaki is kind of a wild card in this race. Hasn't run since the Kentucky Derby. In our race replay analysis, we, could, we did go back and look at that. And I frankly think that uh, the uh, Christophe, Christophe, Christophe Lemaire moved too early on him. And that was why he didn't win. Because he basically had the same trip that Mage and Angel of Empire did. He just moved a little early. I think he is a quality horse. Uh, I think if he had a prep race under him, I'd like him a hell of a lot more. This is a very long layoff. Um, I've heard uh, a Japanese uh, person uh, in the know talking about the Japanese horses, and he uh, really wasn't couldn't endorse Derma Sotogaki for this race. Uh, at 20 to 1, you're getting a very nice price. Uh, I could see this one getting underneath. Um, I think it's certainly possible. And of course, in, in this field, he could throw a bomb in and, and, and upset the apple cart. Uh, but I think it's more likely that uh, he'll, have a, he'll have an okay effort and uh, probably end up, end up at the bottom of the try of the super at best. I, I just can't. Uh, it's, it's just hard to endorse a horse who's been off this long uh, who would be uh, you know, maybe he's matured a little bit since then, but uh, uh, there's too many unknowns with him. Let's say, at, particularly at a mile and a quarter. So I'm, I'm going to uh, uh, I'm going to pass. Saudi Crown will likely be the speed of the speed. I think uh, getting has the inside advantage over some of the other ones. Uh, trained by Brad Cox, Loren Giroux. Uh, this one really hasn't done anything wrong. Won the Pennsylvania Derby with a very nice race uh, and was game to finish, getting pressured by Dreamlike. Uh, but there's others in this race who want to do the same thing. He's not going to be able to get off to an easy lead, and I think that's really the biggest issue I have with Saudi Crown. Uh, I think he's a nice horse, and uh, he would need to take another step forward, and it's certainly possible but I, uh, given the other speed in this race, I think it's going to be awful difficult for him to wire this field, especially at a mile and a quarter, a distance he hasn't run before. Uh, so Saudi Crown, I think, you know, you're getting good value with him. 
but I, I, the shape of this race doesn't really set up well for him, in my opinion. So uh, I'm probably going to toss because I don't think he can hang on to be in the money. Clapton has been training very well, apparently. Uh, from what I've heard, uh, Mike Welsh, uh, the Clocker Report, says he's looked awful good. Uh, this is, is an improving horse. There's no question about that. Uh, his last two races have been solid, and he's been getting better in each, and now you've got him third off the layoff. Uh, the Lucas Classic, he was, was a bit of a surprise. That was more of a grade three field, to be honest, but he did display uh, a nice effort, and we know that he's more than likely going to be coming from the clouds, and there will be some pace to run to here. So the fact that he's in good form, I think he should get the mile and a quarter. Uh, he did so in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. Uh, so uh, I think this is one to watch at 20 to 1. I, I think he's going to offer some really nice value. And who knows, with the right setup, uh, I mean, I think it's remote that he could win this race, but I think he can use him underneath confidently. Ushba Tesoro, uh, that nip on TV high, that last race, I thought was awesome. He just looked awesome. Um, he raided off the leaders, and that was important to note that he is not a stone closer uh, per se. Uh, he did do by World Cup, he did, but that was probably due to the field and the shape of the race. But back in Japan, he was he raided right off the leaders and then just took charge when it was time to go and displayed uh, awesome acceleration. I think this horse is coming into this race in great form. Now, it is true that the other day uh, he did have some gait issues in his training and was very reluctant to load. Um, okay, fine. But prior to that, uh, it had been noted that he was looking really good, training lights out. So uh, I'm going to overlook that. I don't think it's that much of an issue. Uh, if it persists for the next couple of days, it, it, then perhaps we'll have to reevaluate. But right now, I think Ushba de Soro is the horse to beat uh, and is likely going to be reflected in the odds. Senior Buscador, we know what he wants to do. He's going to close from the clouds. That's it, and that's his only chance. Uh, at Santa Anita, that is not necessarily a great place to be. Uh, the, the track favors early speed. We know this. And uh, so his running style, uh, while, you know, he's an honest horse and he generally gives uh, his best effort every time, I think he's a little against it tactically in this race. But at 30 to 1, I mean, he's worth a gander for underneath. But I think it'd be highly remote if he, to, for his possibilities to win this race. Dreamlike is a one that uh, they brought along. And, you know, we remember he was on the Derby Trail uh, for briefly, and uh, they put him in the Wood Memorial, which was not a great field, let's be honest. And he had a good third. Uh, he was leading briefly, but uh, before being run down by Lord Miles and Hitchell. Uh, since then, he, uh, he came back Saratoga, got a pretty convincing win against a field he should have beaten easily, uh, and then followed it up with kind of a clunker in an allowance race. And then gets to the Pennsylvania Derby and runs a good race. So which one shows up? Not sure. Let's also remember the Pennsylvania Derby. It was sloppy. That may have helped him. Uh, perhaps he is uh, had two races on off tracks, one win, one second, and those are his best efforts. Something to think about. Uh, it's, you know, I, I mean, I don't really know what to do with this one, to be honest. <coughs> that was a career effort in the Pennsylvania Derby. And I mean, you know, given the fact it was such a significant uh, rise from his prior efforts, uh, I'm going to believe a letdown is possibly in order. And uh, there's not enough here for me to get excited about. He's a gun runner at four years old. He'll probably be a pretty good horse, but I'm not willing to bank on him uh, being a contender now. And so I'm going to pass. Bright Future is uh, another Pletcher trainee, and uh, this one of late has been pretty good. Uh, he, you know, he had uh, the Brooklyn handicap was uh, was just uh, too bad to be believed, and uh, but he followed it right up with two solid efforts. However, 
Uh, those fields are not the same level of class that we're dealing with here. So this is a step up in class for a horse who uh, has been okay. Uh, I wouldn't say uh, he's been lighting the world on fire. Uh, he hasn't doesn't really have a whole lot of graded stakes experience. Um, you know, at, at ten to one, I, I think the price is uh, the price is probably a little too low. I'd like to see him higher. Um, and uh, you know, he's he's going to be coming in fresh. If you like him, you can maybe take him under. But I don't see enough here uh, to get really excited about him, and I'm going to pass. Which leads us to Arabian Night, and is him being the favorite in this race to me is ridiculous. I, and I'll just say that right off the bat. I don't know how uh, the morning line, uh, the odds makers, come up with him being the favorite. I just don't get it. Trained by Bob Baffert, okay. Zaydan Racing, great. We have seen this horse run some spectacular races. Uh, the Southwest Stakes, <coughs> in the mud, he won for fun. He really didn't beat a whole lot, let's be honest. But uh, it was a great race. Came back in the Haskell, and when there was pressure put on him, and I cannot stress this enough, uh, you had that, uh, uh, I cannot recall his name, but awesome, some, awesome Strong, who actually went out and attacked Arabian Night from the get-go, and you see what happened. Go Rocket Ride and Mage were able to get the better of him. Uh, he kept on well. I think he's got grit to a degree, but the secret to Arabian Night running a good race is not being pressured on the front end. Are you going to get that here? No, he's got Saudi crown. I think missed the cut might be up uh, to challenge to a degree. He's going to have some horses breathing down his neck. And I think that compromises his chances greatly. Uh, he is coming into this race fresh. He did win the Pacific Classic, but also note nobody got to him. They just kind of let him get off to the lead and away he went. So I think that makes a big difference. The fact that he'll have some other pace pressure and it's all to the inside. They've got a big advantage over him. He's going to have to hustle to get out to the lead uh, at a distance where we're not overly certain that uh, he can do it twice in a row. Look at that final time in the Pacific Classic, 2.03. Okay, for the West Coast, that is incredibly slow. You're not going to get that here. So there's a lot of things working against Arabian Night, in my opinion, and I'm going to toss him. Can't take him at 3-1 to one or even anything shorter than that in this race. Which leads us to Proxy. Uh, Proxy is a bit of an enigma. You know, he uh, many times he, you could see the talent there throughout his career, but you couldn't understand why he didn't do better. He had this penchant for stopping at the, at the top of the stretch. Well, it appears that they've worked with him and, and worked that out of his system because he's been a much better horse this year. Uh, he's, uh, he won the Oakland Handicap. Uh, he, won, he was second in the Jockey Club, uh, the Monmouth Cup. Not necessarily races at this class level. And uh, maybe you can go back to the Stephen Foster to find a race that was comparable class-wise to a degree. Uh, not really. But... Uh, he, he's a horse, he, you know, he has the talent. It's just a question of whether he can put it together. Uh, I find it very difficult to invest in this type of horse. You are going to get 12 to 1. Uh, Joel Rosario has been riding this horse well. You see three out of four uh, finishes in the money and uh, two wins. Uh, but I'm just not sure about his ability to ratchet it up to win this race. That's really my biggest concern more than anything else. Can he finish in the money uh, underneath? Sure. I think it's possible. I think he'll be just off uh, the pace and may get the jump on some of the other runners. But uh, I find it very hard uh, to accept this one as a win candidate. Okay, so here's what we've got for the Classic. Uh, I'm going to use Proxy. Uh, I'm not really high on this horse being a win candidate, but I think he can factor in being up near the pace uh, when it... Uh, I think it's going to be fairly significant, and he should be right there. Um, he'll have a chance. 
Uh, he's gonna have a he's got a tough post in thirteen, but I think he'll get to where he wants to, and uh, but I think underneath is probably more likely. Clapton is training very well, and I've noted that he's. Uh, uh, I think he can run a little closer to the pace if he needs to, um, but I think the the issue more than anything for me is the fact that he's getting better and he's training really well. Uh, so at 20 to 1, I think he's a horse we want to include. I'm, I don't think he can win this race, but I think he's one that certainly can factor. Ushpa Tesoro, I think, is the best horse in this race and my pick to win it. Uh, he's training very well. That race in Japan so, was all I needed to see. The fact that he can be up closer to the pace, he's got a good post position here, and I think he'll be in prime striking position. Uh, and uh, I think he's the horse to beat for sure. I really like Zandon in this spot. At 12 to 1 in particular, that's an outstanding price on a horse. Of these, uh, who was one of the true grade one horses in this race, along with Ushba Tesoro, uh, I would love nothing more than to see him get over the hump and finally get a significant win like he did in the Woodward. Maybe the light bulb has got off and he gone off and he can finally do it. Uh, I think he's a, got plenty of talent, and uh, I, I think he's a, he's a, of the Americans, I think he is the best candidate to win this race. And then we're going to throw in Senior Buscador. So at 30-1, to 1, you get him underneath in the try of the Super. I don't think uh, with a closing style at Santa Anita, I think he's kind of up against it a little bit. But uh, uh, his late running style, when others are backing up, he should be coming on and uh, can help to bolster uh, your try. I hope We're just going to hope we don't get too short a price on Ushba Tesoro, and then Arabian Night takes a lot of the money, and uh, that gives us a really sweet value uh, for the Classic. So that's the Classic. I think Ushba Tesoro was the best bet to win it, so the Japanese are going to get their uh, Breeders' Cup win. Uh, they one of, they've got a couple of chances uh, on the day, but I think this is probably their best one, given the defections from this field. There's a lot of horses in here who are not grade one caliber, let's face it. So uh, I think he's got a really good shot. Zandon, I think, is the other uh, grade one caliber horse. So uh, I'm thinking about a real cold exacta with those two. So I uh, hope that our analysis helps you with your own wagering. Uh, strategy and i wish you the best of luck as always and of course if you do like content like this please like and subscribe it does help to keep us going and again cannot thank those of you who have recently signed on enough really appreciate the support and uh, i love the way this community continues to grow so that's it from here we will continue with our postings we've got the turf sprint and the sprint coming up so be on the lookout for those i'll talk to you soon and until then be well